Hi, this is Fuji from Paraprint and welcome back to my channel. On this channel, I give tips and inspiration for 3D printing fashion at home. Today, we're going to be talking about the next version of the Montreal tote bag. The big difference with the previous version is that this one has two inner pockets. <laughs> These are all the 3D printed components you need to create the third version of the modular tote bag. The second version is available on Cults to download and the third version, which has pockets and some other updates to make it slightly more better, is available on Patreon. Both links are in the description box below if you're interested. First step is getting the settings right. And in this case, I'm using Cure, but whatever slicer program you use, first thing to do is to get the right settings for what you want to do with the bag because the files are the same but the outcome is quite different where you can go for for example a triangle infill which is what i've used here and it does give a different feeling to the bag it does mean it's either less or more flexible depending on how high you set the infill so you can really play around. Check out the linked video on how to load a print profile. No matter what kind of filament you're using for textile printing, you want to keep three things in mind. To make sure that your top and bottom layer are set to zero, otherwise you won't actually see the infill. Have the wall set to one, which is actually just my personal preference because it doesn't put that much emphasis on the wall and more on the textile itself. And the third tip, and this is just my personal favorite, is to set the line infill at 40%. Just to compare, I made it in two different colors with open and closed circles. And it's entirely up to you how you want to finish the bag. Let's get right into the assembly. The assembly of the third version is in a different order because it has more complex components in order to have pockets and in order for the bag to hold more weight. In this case, we want to get started with the handles. Where the hole is further than the arrow, you want to weave through up to under. After you've woven the middle piece and the two longer handle pieces, you want to start attaching the base of the pocket to the handle. Same concept, the further the hole is from the arrow, you go from up to under. The hole where it's closer to the arrow, you go from under to up. The second step is attaching all of the weird shaped squares onto your handles to make that hole. Starting off with the piece that has four long necks. What you want to do is weave it through up to under to up again until all six of the four long necked squares are attached to the base of the handle. The illustration on the right shows what that looks like once you're finished. Next up are the squares with three long necks. And in the illustration, you can see that the left top corner neck is a lot shorter. And the reason for this difference in length is that anything that is on top of the pocket needs to weave through three layers rather than two. And therefore it needs to be a little bit longer. Right, next one up is the squares with two long necks and they go all around the edges. Once that is done, it should look something like this. And then it's time for the last piece to complete the pocket, which is the corner pieces. This piece only has one long neck. If you've got this base, you want to start moving around it and make half of the tote back hole. So you got both the normal squares and the circles to kind of fill out all the gaps until you've got half of your back. Of course, this is the part that takes the longest because there's the most connections that need to be made. The part where you connect the circle on top of the squares on top of the pocket base is definitely a bit more tricky, but this technique is the same as everything else. Right, so now you've got half of a bag, then you make the other half of the bag and before you attach them, you start attaching the pockets because at that point it's just easiest to reach. And what I forgot to mention here is obviously before you can attach the pocket, you need to make the pockets. So using the same method as everywhere else, you attach nine differently shaped squares to nine corresponding circles. 
to attach the pockets you want to use the vertical gaps around the pocket base that so far haven't been used yet. When you're finished, the connection flaps should fall in between the pocket base and the rest of the back. So it's almost like a disappearing seam. Right, and now you've got two halves with pockets, so it's time to attach them to each other. I like to lay out the two halves first and do that in a straight line before doing the other sides. And that means going all around, which is the same circles that you've been using throughout the whole design with the two corner pieces which are slightly different. For the corner piece you actually want to fold it open again as far as possible. The first arrow you only weave through one hole and the second arrow you weave through both holes. Then you fold it in half and you fold down the, the extra part of the corner circle on top of the first half of that circle. The single arrow that was still outstanding goes in through the top of that half of the circle and back through both halves of the circle. Moving on to the bottom, which is the exact same as the sides. And once you've done all of that, it should look something like this at the bottom. And like that on the sides. Then the last step is to make the top rim of the bag, which is a slightly different way of weaving it. And there is two different circle modules again needed for this. Let's first tackle all the circles that go on a half that has the handle. The part of the circle that has two double holes, that's what you want to overlap with the handle as shown on the right side image. So here as well you want to fold the circle in half. Where there is two double holes you weave through both at the same time, under to up to under. And where there's only a single hole, you first weave through the one that has two holes, fold the circle double and go back through both of the holes. And then for the rim where there's no handle, you've got the double single hole module. Here you want to weave the first arrow up through the hole and then fold the circle double and fold back up to under through both layers of the circle. Right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to get more tips and inspiration on how to create 3D printed fashion at home. And a final note, if you don't have a 3D printer but do want this 3D printed modular tote bag, then definitely reach out because I sell them as DIY assembly kits. See you next one.